you want to talk about dropping the ball? Everybody involved in this train wreck deserves every bit of criticism that this movie has been getting over the past year. I just don't understand how a studio with the most recognizable characters and storylines continuously produce shitty movies. The DCEU literally has source material with all the answers and they're failing the open book tests. But I digress. By the way, there will be spoilers in this video, so if you haven't watched Black Adam by now, turn the volume down and go watch it. I need the views. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell while you're at it. We both know you're not supposed to be here. So, in 2007, it was announced that Dwayne The Rock Johnson was going to portray Black Adam in a Shazam film that was in the works at the time. That film went through development hell for a long time. Then years into the superhero frenzy that we are currently experiencing, conversations of him playing Black Adam arises again. This time, instead of the character sharing the screen with Shazam, The Rock wanted Adam to have his own solo movie before meeting the man-child superhero. Why you ask? Bro, I don't know. He probably didn't want to play second fiddle to another actor with little to no star power. Fast forward, Black Adam drops on October 21st, 2022. And by October 23rd, the movie owed everybody money. Hell, I think they owe me some money. It was a poor opening weekend. They tried to fabricate some numbers to make it look like a success, but we all know that shit was struggling. Now they have to listen to me dismantle this movie almost an entire year later. Tell them the men in black sent you. Well, yes, but, but not to me. Say it to the bad guys. Before we get into it, I do want to say that this movie isn't all bad. There were definitely some bright spots. The Rock did a solid job, no pun intended, playing Teth Adam. We're used to seeing him smiling and being charming and making jokes. He left all that mass appeal shit in the jungle. He brought an intensity and a force that a character like Black Adam embodies. His overall performance deserves some praise. Also, this movie doesn't drag at all. Almost instantly, we're put in the middle of the drama. And you know I like drama. The music is intense and it intensifies as the movie progresses. It goes from mildly intense to shit getting real out here. I do think a R rating would have been a little bit more suitable for the direction that they wanted to go in. But I was satisfied enough with the PG-13 violence. It was definitely straddling the line though. With movie nowadays depending on CGI, you have to acknowledge it. In this case, the CGI was pretty good. When I saw it in theaters, I thought to myself that maybe the DCEU is actually making some progress in that department. Then the Fury of the Gods and The Flash came out and they lost all credibility. Now, on to the bullshit. Gotta be kidding me. If there's one thing I hate more than a movie with a bad story, is when a movie has a narrator giving me a history lesson. The top of Black Adam starts off with Amon telling us about the history of Conduct, Eternium, and the Champion. Bro, let us learn all this information as we watch. As many times as they have referenced all of this throughout the film, we didn't need to be told this as soon as the movie started. Then we have Hawkman introducing his little league baseball team. Their introduction scene made me palm my face. We do not care enough about them for them to be formally introduced. Have them in place already and slide in some background information like you did here. It's not as cool as nanobots. Well, the wind thing is called aerokinesis. And the nanobots were injected into my bloodstream by this really messed up scientist. Perfect example there. Don't overdo it with dialogue. Just something that doesn't require an entire scene dedicated to it. Adam Smasher was fascinated with Cyclone manipulating nanobots to heal Karim's gun injury, which led to Cyclone giving some insight on her past. From this conversation, we can infer that this was their first time working with each other, or they haven't worked with each other for that long. No introduction scene or background check needed. Plus, I don't like these team up movies disguised as solo films. The only exception is Captain America Civil War. That was a masterpiece. The MCU struck gold with that one, and they, along with the DCEU, went crazy with the team-up flicks. This is supposed to be a Black Adam film. 
not a Black Adam and a party of four. The final battle really pissed me off. The fight should have solely been between Adam and Sabat. You would think the most important fight scene in the entire movie would be between the title character and the main antagonist, who we really don't see until the final act. I'm also very tired of these villains getting jumped. They did the same thing in Thor Love and Thunder. Jane and Thor ganged up on Gore. Now Adam and Hawkman tag team Sabat. How are we supposed to view Black Adam as the champion of conduct when he can't even defeat a devil who has been out of commission as of 10 minutes ago and his army is strung out on drugs? That army couldn't fight a cold. I don't think I've ever seen a movie with a good twist and a bad one. Revealing that Black Adam is actually the father of Haru, who the wizards initially gave the power of Shazam to before he transferred them to Tath Adam. And when Haru was killed moments later, Adam went on a rage filled rampage and killed the king while almost destroying Kondok. I wasn't expecting that at all. Now, Ishmael, being the twist villain, was just too obvious. His demeanor when I first see him tells me everything I need to know. Also, if you're riding into the sun and you don't have any shades on, that lets me know you might be a little crazy. This is where you come in. Are you ready? Damn it. By now, you all should know I have one person I can't stand whenever I'm doing these videos. And today's winner is Amon, the useless child. This boy was just in the way of whatever was trying to get accomplished. Like, bro, move around. He was constantly just spewing out information and giving terrible motivational speeches. He wanted to be a martyr or so bad. Now, I respect the eagerness to want to get active in the revolution, but man, he was annoying. Sir, I need you to assess the situation and for the love of God, read the room. Also, I hated his speech during that final battle. With these hands, we build conduct. And with these hands, we will set it free. I've never been so unmotivated and unmoved in my life. If I heard that speech on the battlefield, I'd just go home and let the walking dead have all this shit. That was not rallying the troops, bro. That was whispering a secret. Speak up. Put some bass in your voice and talk like you got something to say. Hey, we got some ass to kick. This is Kandak. Then roll in on your skateboard, war ready, throwing up the Illuminati sign. Let the demons know they're about to go back to hell. After being kidnapped, losing the crown, and almost having your mom arrested, the least you can do is deliver an impactful speech to the town that you about nearly destroyed. He didn't make it. There are some things in this movie that just doesn't make sense. I cannot wrap my mind around the fact that the soldiers allow Adriana to summon Black Adam. I know they heard her whispering Bible verses. If I could hear her reciting Young Thug lyrics, I know they did too. Plus the damn ground was lighting up. That's an indication that we need to shoot her because she calling for backup from somewhere that ain't here. Also, why the hell do the soldiers keep shooting at Black Adam when they can clearly see the bullets bouncing off this man? At that point, you need to reevaluate your life choices and negotiate some terms and conditions for you to get out of there. Finally, why in the hell is Ishmael dropping the force field before shooting at Amon? Why not shoot Amon and Adriano while you have the protection from the supers who obviously can't get to you? Shoot them, put your crown on, then wreak havoc. You're making your job harder than it needs to be. Oh, also that post credit scene was a bit odd. Amanda Waller tells Black Adam that since he's a solo act and won't bow down to her, she's making conduct his prison. Like lady, he didn't plan on going anywhere anyway. What the hell are you talking about? I kneel before no one. As much of a dumpster fire the movie Black Adam was critically and financially, it's enjoyable. The script was definitely dated. If this movie came out in 2008, I guarantee you it would have broken records. Honestly, the heavy action and intense music makes this movie watchable. 
The CGI not being terrible also makes it visually appealing enough to not roll your eyes in the dark. It's not the best, but definitely an improvement. I do find it funny that the post credit scene features Superman, and now both Henry Cavill and The Rock got the boot from the DCEU. In hindsight, I bet they wish they would have just paired Shazam and Black Adam for the Shazam sequel. At least if it would have flopped, it would have been one flop instead of two back to back. Anyway, let me know down in the comments what you think went wrong with Black Adam. Do you think a Shazam and Black Adam movie would have been better? Was it a mistake for The Rock to be so involved in the making of this movie? Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on your way out. I'll see y'all on the next video. Be easy. And tell them that the man of black...